Hey, everybody, would you turn to Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, and we'll be continuing our series here in just a minute. But something happened this last week. The Time magazine, 100 most influential people in the world list, came out this past week, but it was the 100 next. It's a little different version of the list. So they see them as a, 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 this list, a unique list throughout the world of 100 emerging leaders, people to watch, people that are already beginning to shape their world. And it can be in good ways or bad ways. It's kind of interesting. But the list is most influential, people who are making a difference in the world. And their, their description of it, I thought, it really struck me. Time's description of it. Amid a global pandemic, deepening inequality, systemic injustice, and existential questions about truth, democracy, and the planet itself. Like, that, those words just grabbed me. The individuals on this year's list provide clear-eyed hope. So, first of all, we're in a super crazy, bizarre time just in the world. But then to think that our hope is in the emerging list of 100 most influential people in the world, according to Time magazine. I don't know about you, but I do have a little different source for my hope. <laughs> and I do have a clear-eyed, clear-eyed hope because of what I read in his word and what I know about God. But the people on this list, they are doctors and scientists working hard against COVID-19. They are advocates pushing for equality and justice. Listen, this last line cracked me up. They are journalists standing up for the truth. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, oh, that's so good. And artists, sarcasm is our family passion, sorry. Um, sar- uh, artists <laughs> sharing their visions of the present and the future. Kind of an interesting list of people, the influential people. And we are wrapping up a little mini-series today on influence, on being influential people. And it's taken from just a short section of the Sermon on the Mount, which is a really long sermon of Jesus. It's probably a collection of Jesus' teachings over a few days. And in this little mini-series, this this three-Sunday section uh, of our series, uh, we we see that uh, Jesus teaches a lot about godly influence. And what is influence again? Influence is just simply impacting someone's character, thinking, or behavior. That's influence. If you've, if you've changed someone's thinking, you've, you've influenced them. If you've changed how they uh, behave or, or if you've changed how they live their life, I mean, you've influenced someone. That's, that's awesome. So I want to jump over here to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, which was last week's verse. It almost feels like uh, we didn't have it because we weren't in this room. And by the way, we're in this room permanently. <laughs> It's a long story, but we had planned to be here, leave for construction, come back, blah, blah, blah. But we did find out about a week ago, we can stay here. Our contractor calls it keeping the patient alive during surgery. <laughs> so during, while they're doing surgery on the building, we're going to be able to stay here. That's awesome. But last week, we remember that Jesus said this, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. And that you is plural. So you all are the salt of the earth. And I'm going to skip down to today's verse, verse 14. You, you all, are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. I always imagine, wouldn't Jesus do that? Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand. So a lamp in Jesus' day would be a little clay pot with oil and a wick. All right, so not not quite the lamp you're thinking by your bedside today, but he said instead a lamp is placed on a stand, a lamp stand, where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, okay, so why would Jesus bring these illustrations? He's saying, now think about those two illustrations, city on a hill, lamp on a stand. In the same way, Jesus said, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that... Somebody say, so that. That's an important transition in the Bible. So that everyone 
will praise your heavenly Father so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Wow, okay, so that's why we're to be salt and light. Jesus was saying, hey, kingdom people, you salt humanity, like all the people of the world. Hey, kingdom people, you enlighten the world. You light up the world. Just like the, 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 the city lights on a, on a hill at night, you can see them from far away. And it impacts, it, it gives you a, a sense of where you are in relation to the earth. It, it does all kinds of things, kind of looks beautiful. It's, there, it's noticeable, it's impacting to see city lights on a hill in the dark. And just like a small little oil lamp lights up a whole room or a whole house, just like that, Jesus' followers are called to shine God's light in the world. Now, I believe that if you're a follower of Jesus, we all want to be salt and light. I mean, that's, we want to do that. We know we're supposed to. We, we hear Jesus saying that, declaring it over us. But so many times you have no idea how. How do you do that? How do you be salt? How do you be light? You might think that Jesus expects you just to walk up to a perfect stranger on the street and just the first words out of your mouth are something about church. Is that being salt? Is that being light? You might even be feeling guilty that you're not doing more things that are lighting up the world. Or you might just be hoping that Jesus doesn't notice not really doing anything <laughs> and just kind of hoping like maybe he won't Maybe he won't catch me. Maybe he's like worried about some other country or something. Not worried about me right now. Or you might, might be worried that Jesus is going to discover that your light is partially hidden. So remember, remember Jesus, he said, no one puts a light under a bucket. Like who would do that? And maybe you're, you're going like, I hope he doesn't see. My light's partially hidden. There's some stuff kind of blocking my light. Well, let's look at Jesus' context. What, what would have been in a Jewish mindset in his day, especially someone like Jesus who knows the scriptures backwards and forwards? So when he said light of the world, for us, we first hear that phrase and think, oh, it's Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. But that's not where, that's not where the idea comes from. Uh, in, God spoke many years, many centuries before that to the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 60, starting at verse 1, this is what God said through Isaiah. Arise, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is kind of a symbol for God's people. Arise, God's people. Arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. You, you guys, let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. So where does your light even come from? From God, who is light. So his light shines on you, and then he says, you go shine your light. Listen to verse 2 and think about today's events, not only in Auburn, but United States and the world. Darkness, as black as night, covers all the nations of the earth. This is God's perspective of the world. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. This is God speaking to his people through the prophet Isaiah. In Matthew 4, verses 15 to 16, so right before the Sermon on the Mount passage, this is kind of talking about Jesus ramping up his ministry, beginning to be more known and healing people and stuff. In, at the second part of the verse, it says, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, this is a quote. Matthew is quoting Isaiah again. And he says, uh, speaking of some future time from, from Isaiah's point of view, in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And who is that light? Jesus. Jesus. Matthew is saying, hey, we look back at, at Isaiah, that Old Testament prophet, and we can see it being fulfilled right before our very eyes. Jesus is here. The light has come. So in the Jewish mindset, Light of the world isn't just like a random word picture for being a moral person. And I know there are whole huge movements and religions on the face of the earth right now that are based on 
being a good person. I bet if I just say that, oh yes, they are very focused on being good people. I bet in my mind, several groups just, whoop, yep, yep, that's what they're, that's the focus. That's not the Jewish mindset. That is not what would have been in Jesus' mind. Light of the world refers to God's plan to followers to a world in darkness, spiritual darkness that we're talking about. They can't see their way, Jesus said. The good news, which is that kind of interchangeable with the gospel, the good news is that God is on a mission to save and deliver and restore all of us in this sin-broken world and eventually to restore creation to Garden of Eden status. Like that's God's mission that he's on. And how, what is his plan? He would do that through the life, death, resurrection, and exalting of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. God restoring, bringing his light to a dark world through Jesus, his son, giving his life and being raised from the dead. Wow, that's a great, awesome plan. I love it. Because God has a mission, there is church. I don't know if you've ever thought about it that way. We sort of feel like, well, we kind of invented the church. We're kind of doing the church. We are the church. And we come to God and we say, God, what's your plan for us? And that's not how it went. God said, I have a plan to save the world. I'm going to need a church. It's a little different, different way of thinking of, of the same thing. So mission isn't just a line item in a church budget. Oh, yeah, we've got to make sure we give so much to mission. Mission is the church. The church is caught up in the mission of God. Now, I just said what the mission is, to bring God's light of his glory to a world in darkness through his son, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. That's the mission, and we as the church are enveloped in it. Like, we can't get away from it. It's every line item in the budget. It's every minute of every day of every church member. That is the mission of God. So mission isn't just mission trips, but you might go on a mission trip because you're in the mission of God. It's much bigger than a two-week uh, stay in Cambodia, which I have done before. It's much bigger than that, but that might be a part of the mission of God. The church is missional. We are missional. It's who we are. We exist for God's mission. So to put it succinctly, all these last five minutes, I'll just wrap it up like this. Our mission is sharing Jesus, growing together. That's our mission. But it comes from all that background, but we just say it you know, succinctly like that. We're sharing Jesus, growing together. So in the Sermon on the Mount passage, Matthew 5, 13 to 16, that I started with today, Jesus said that we are, this was the command in it, he did a declaration, you are the light of the world, and then he does this command, so let your good deeds Shine out the light of your good deeds so that people will give honor to God. So that, not so that they will say, wow, that's a religion of good people. And that's already a red flag if that's what people are saying. We, Jesus said, you do good so that they will say God is good. Wow, if his followers, if God's followers, if Jesus' followers act like that, I want to know that God. That's what's supposed to happen with good deeds shining out your light, God gets all the praise, all the credit, all the attention. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, this is the, one of the early church leaders, the apostle Peter, echoed Jesus' teaching. He said, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior, your good deeds, and they will give honor to God. That's the point of light and good deeds and all of that. It's that bring honor to God. So I, I would just summarize this message this way. When you do good deeds to glorify God, you are the light of the world. When you do good deeds to glorify God, to bring him honor, you are the light of the world. We as a church are going to be salt and light. That's a vision statement. 
we as a church are going to be salt and light in this world, sharing Jesus with our lifestyle witness and with life-giving words. We speak life. That's who we are. That's what we do in the Southeast Puget Sound region. That's our corner where God has said, do something here. Make a difference here. Be salt and light here. So what if you and I could be on the next 100 list of most influential people in the Southeast Puget Sound region? Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be amazing if you and I were on that, that list? Because our light, the light of God's glory shining through our lives, was affecting people, impacting people so much that we were actually influencing and impacting people's thinking in the Southeast Puget Sound region. Just, so just think about how we think in this region of the country. <laughs> if we could impact and influence their thinking, their character, and their behavior, we would be on the next 100 most influential people list for the Southeast Puget Sound region. That is awesome. But you or I, we may not change the whole world by ourselves, individually, you know, one at a time. But together, we will, this is a vision statement, we will change somebody's world. We will. One person at a time. One family at a time. You all are the salt of the earth. You all are the light of the world. That is awesome. That is who you are. That's who we are. I include myself in that. So I want to focus on some salt and light areas where we believe that God is calling us as a church to focus. Uh, the more we can focus, the more, uh, the more good we will do in those areas. It just seems like that helps. So the first area is kids and families. Kids and families. We have noticed over the years that God has given us a sweet spot for ministering to kids. When you think about all the different things we've tried, all the different outreaches we've tried, the ones that seem to have the most tangible, immediate, measurable uh, benefit are those that minister to kids directly, like our VBS or the Christmas gift drive through or different things like that, uh, and that minister to kids and families. And we as adults and people of all ages in our congregation, we, we're, we do the ministering, and we see fruit there. And we believe that God has strategically put us in this spot in Auburn, this, this place where we, are, uh, where we are gathering today and where we're broadcasting from. And here's, here's, here's one of the reasons, and I, I think God's going to reveal more as we go, but here's one of the reasons I think this is so strategic. We are just a few blocks away from Auburn High School. We're a few blocks away from Dick Scobie Elementary. We're a few blocks away from Washington Elementary. And we're a few blocks away from the Auburn School District Administrative Hub. So Dr. Spachati, uh, our, our school superintendent, and all of his staff, they are just a few blocks away, just right over there. God has put us here for a reason. Yeah. We're not going to waste that strategic position. We're going to be salt and light from here in those areas. So just think, each child that we can help follow Jesus at a young age if we can help them to walk in their identity in Christ, oh my goodness, I just feel like I could just stop and weep and preach a long time on identity in Christ. The world tries to impose identity in so many different ways, like identity, like I'm rich, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. So many different ways, but what does God say? about your identity. If we could teach kids that from a young age, and, and if we could teach them to avoid those substances and relationships that trip up a whole life and start an avalanche that is really hard to, to rein back in as an adult, if we could stop that, prevent that avalanche from ever happening in their lives, I'm thinking we're playing the long game here. Okay, all right. So we're gonna raise up those kids now they're going to be driving uh, uh, in, in 10 years. They're going to be marrying, starting families, and they've got, we are going to give them a firm foundation. Yeah. They're not going to have all the baggage that, that comes. And then generation by generation in this region, yeah. we are going to be salt and light, changing yeah. kids and families. Yeah. Man, I would much, it, it's much more um, uh, comforting to be able to prevent 
then to come after and, and pick up the pieces. Oh my goodness, what if we could, what if we could prevent it? What if, what if we could instill a godly, Christ, uh, Christ-centered identity in every child who comes through these doors? And I just want to declare right now, if you are serving in kids' ministries in our congregation, you are the top. You are on the front lines. You are making a difference. And I, I, I just, wow, I'm so just amazed to think of what, what happens when we change one kid's life for Jesus. Thank God my wife Shelley's neighbor invited her to a VBS when she was 9 or 10. Thank God, because Shelly did not come from any, there was no light in her family at all. And someone was light to her, and now she's a pastor. That's because just one little life, one kid, one just seemingly insignificant kid, it was my wife. So that's a very significant thing to me and to our church. And just think if we could multiply that over and over and over. Man, take a week off to serve in VBS. Take a week off your work. It's that important. It, it, because we are changing lives for eternity. A second area of focus for our church is city leaders. And you notice each of these, it's just a little bit of our flavor of who we are, who God's, what God's put in us, who, who, he's, who he's brought here. I listen, I, I love my fellow pastors in, in Auburn. We get together once a month uh, for lunch, and they came here this last week. And, oh my goodness, I was so blessed by my brothers. Like, we, we were in the upper room, uh, the youth, uh, youth room, and uh, kind of towards the end of the tour, and one of the guys just said, I just want to pray right now. He just stops right then and just prays for me and for us. It was so awesome. There's so much support in our town, and they're like, Garen, you are meant to be here. This is such a great place for your church. We're so excited for you cheering us on. And one of the things that I noticed is each of those pastors, each of those churches just has a little different flavor, a little different niche, and that's healthy and awesome and great. And for, for us, we know that we, we have a regional focus, Southeast Puget Sound region. And right here in this room and watching online, there are people here, we're repping many different cities, not just Auburn. Probably a majority is Auburn, uh, but we have people here from Kent, Bonnie Lake, Federal Way, uh, 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 Algona Pacific, Sumner, Puyallup, uh, just all, all over around this region. Online, we've got people I know from Spokane, hi mom, hi dad, and we have people <laughs> in Kansas City, we have people in Everett, hi John. We, 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 are, we have uh, people that are a part of us, and we, each of us, where we are, we can make a difference in our cities. We can be salt and light in your city. So we're going to do some stuff focused as a church where we together, we get together, we do this thing. Pastors are planning uh, some type of a city improvement uh, thing this summer. So we, together, we'll participate in things like that. But uh, also, just where you are, each of us is salt and light. So you individually and us together, we're salt and light wherever we go. We're going to be salt and light in our cities. Jesus said, let our good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise our Heavenly Father. So we're going to work alongside our city leaders uh, whenever possible and share Jesus with them as we do it with our city leaders. So sometimes uh, it's, it's not about the task that seems like there. It's about the team that's doing the task as well as the task. It's, it's both. Uh, so I, and when I say city leaders, I'm thinking of leaders in government. Uh, the Auburn uh, government, uh, city government is around 400 people, 400-ish on, on staff. That, that is a chunk of people right there. Who's, who is sharing Jesus with them? Who is sharing, sharing love with them? Uh, I will. Let's us. Let's us do it. Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking of, of leaders in education as well. Uh, so teachers, principals, district superintendents, uh, personnel, and just all, all of those people. So that's who's in my mind when I say that. So we'll support city efforts to end homelessness through compassion and accountability. we got a really good guy in our city right now, Kent Hay, who's just in charge, and he is out there. He is, he is he's making a difference, not just uh, he's going beyond a handout, and let's, uh, let's get you stable, let's get you housed. It's so great. So we want to jump in and, and just be a, a support and a help and things like that because we love people. We, we want to see people be stabilized 
and able to think clearly enough to hear a gospel presentation. And we want to see people set free from whatever is going on in their lives. A third area of focus is just simply human need. Human need. So we believe that Jesus makes a lasting difference in people's lives. So we are going to be a body of believers who minister deliverance to the person that's held captive or oppressed by the enemy. We're going to bring healing to marriages. And marriages are just, they're attacked so vehemently by the devil. And we're going to be a place of shoring up and strengthening and helping marriages to thrive. We're going to appoint them to the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace. We're going to care for the sick. And we're going to point them to the ultimate healer. You see, each good deed has got to point back and glorify God. We're going to meet practical needs like uh, giving out food, Christmas gifts, etc., while bringing honor and glory to God. So we didn't just give out Christmas gifts last, last Christmas. We also gave out Bibles. Like we're going to be pointing people back to Jesus. We're not just a social justice organization. We are on mission. And there's a lot of different practical ways that I'm talking about we can do that mission. I know that not everybody is uniquely gifted to be a daily verbal witness for Jesus. Not, not everybody's just even built like that. So I think it's okay to just acknowledge that. Some people are introverts. That's just how it is. But as followers of Jesus, we are all called to promote the gospel. We're all called to promote the gospel. We are all on mission. It's not like, well, I'm not called to mission. No, every, if, you're, if you're a believer, you're called to mission. It just might look differently in how it works out in, in our different lives. So we're, we promote the gospel with our good deeds. So if you're an introvert, can you bake some cookies after COVID? <laughs> when we're allowed to bake cookies and share them again? Like, so so there's, there, we're just, there's a place for all of us. We promote the gospel with our money. When, when, when we give, and we, we personally give to our church, and when we give to the ministries of our church, we're promoting the gospel. We're making sure it gets out there. When we promote the gospel with our church efforts. So when we all get together and we do a Christmas gift drive through or whatever we do, uh, uh, a, even a city effort or whatever, we, we t- do it together. We promote the gospel and with our words. As the Holy Spirit opens a door, even if you're an introvert, if the Holy Spirit's open a door, you start talking right? And find the joy of being able to be light, the light of the world to somebody else. Maybe you're, uh, if you are a little quieter, maybe you won't be on a stage like this, but maybe you'll just be one-on-one in a very calm setting with a coworker, using your words and sharing Jesus, being the light. Your life impacts others. As, as a, a kingdom people, we are people of influence. Jesus used salt and light as word pictures of the kind of influence and impact. Those are two impacting substances that you and I will have on the people around us. But Jesus also warned us, and we talked about it last week, that saltless salt is thrown away. Salt that's been diluted or polluted. And covered lights are useless. Jesus said, why would anyone light a lamp and put a bucket over it. That's, it's useless. It does no good. That's not what it's for. So if you damage through bad behavior your influence and impact or our influence, it may be hard to get it back. And Jesus is just warning about that. It matters as a believer how you treat others and, and how you live your life. It matters. It affects more than just you. It, in fact, it, it impacts the kingdom of God. So let's just, let's be a positive influence. Let's just, let's just set out to be a bright, shining light, full of good deeds, bringing glory to God the Father. Let's live compelling lives, not repelling lives or repulsive lives. Now we usually say it. I didn't want to say repulsive because it didn't rhyme with compelling. But it's really probably repulsive. Live compelling lives, not repulsive lives. You are the salt of the earth. You, you If you're part of our online community, if you're here in the room, you are the salt of the earth. So let's go heal, clean, preserve, season. You're part of the world. And by the way, I promised you last week in the, we did live stream only last week because of snow. I I promised you salt samples. 
and our ushers will, will be at the door with a couple baskets of gourmet salt samples for you to take uh, right after the service, uh, before, the, before the meeting. Um, you all are the light of the world. So let's shine our light in the dark places. God's, God, from God's perspective, there's a lot of darkness in the world. Let's shine our light in those places, and let's connect the dots to give glory to God. Let's just not just try to have people say, you're a good person. Let's, let's say, you do good deeds, so they say, God is good. I want to know your God that affected your life. I want him to affect my life. So would you stand wherever you are, and let's pray. Why don't you stand in, in this room online? If you can stand, do it. Get up off that couch. And, and let's pray. Let, let's pray together. Would you bow your heads with me? So, Lord, I pray that you would help our lives to be savory salts and luminous lights, Lord God. Lord, you have called us to such a great thing and such a high standard, and yet you come in us and you give us the power. You give us the word. You give us the support and community. Lord, you, you make it so possible. So, Lord, I pray that we would be undiluted salt that we would really make an impact. We make people thirsty for Jesus. I pray, the Lord, that we would be light that really shines so that real people could see you and the difference you make in our lives. With your head still bowed, uh, I just want to ask you, uh, if, is the Holy Spirit asking you to step up in some way to promote the gospel? A lot of different ways to promote the gospel. If so, would you just raise your hand? Man, some people, I love it when hands just go, I'm, I'm in! yes. That God is speaking to you, and, and, and he's speaking to me to say, Garen, step up and us. Step up to promote the gospel any way and every way that you can. Promote it. I'd like to pray for you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to see the needs. So many times we just walk right by that coworker, that classmate, that neighbor who's hurting. Lord God, help us to see and, and then to see that need and, and to heal it, to fill it, Lord God, with you and with your resources, Lord God. Lord, help us to be faithful tithers because that's how your mission goes forward. Uh, all those practical things that we do, like giving away gifts or even hanging a banner out on the street so people know we're here. Lord, I pray you'd help us to be faithful tithers, to honor you first with our income, Lord. Help us to participate with our church when our church does something, Lord. Help us to all jump in and do it together, that we would serve with strength and with unity and with joy, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to use our words to point people to you. Sometimes we got to go beyond just delivering the cookies and we got to say, I love you because Jesus loves me. Lord God, help us to be ready when you open the door. And Lord, I'm asking you specifically for some people. I'm asking you for three Uber, on steroids, evangelists, just to be a part of our congregation. Because we need, we need those folks too, Lord. And I, I believe that you've got that in mind for us. And for all the rest of us, Lord, I pray that you would help us to evangelize however, whenever you open a door. Help us to do it, Lord. Help us to really be salt and light. Thank you, Jesus. And with your head still bowed, I want to give you one more invitation. If you have not yet experienced Jesus for yourself, you got to meet him. He is awesome. He is Jesus, the Savior of the world. He will live in you by, your spirit, by his Spirit if, he, if you invite him. Why do you even need a Savior? Because we have all sinned, and our sins keep us from relationship with God. So all of us need the solution that Jesus brings. How do you find his solution? You put your faith in him. How do you do that? Turn from your sins, all those things that harm yourself and others. Turn your life over to Jesus. Say, Lord, I give you me. And let him lead. Become his follower. Jesus says to you today, come follow me. And I'll, 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 make, you, uh, I'll make you productive for the kingdom of God. So if you, if you want to do that today, we, we have a really nice, great, socially distant, but full crowd uh, today. And I'm wondering if there are some of you, heads are bowed, if some of you would just catch my eye and raise your hand if you want to say, I'd like to become a Christian today. I'd like to put my faith in Jesus. Uh, I don't have a relationship with him yet, but I would like to. Whether you've been a part of our church for a long time or, or you're newer, it doesn't matter. If that's you, would you raise your hand? And online, would you raise your hand to God? We've done a lot of hand raising to God today. And that's, that's because it's, it's powerful to take a step, to, to do something tangible. 
And if today you're putting your faith in Jesus, would you just do a repeat after me prayer? I'll just kind of lead you through it and coach you through it. Uh, but, but let's pray. And let's all just support those who are praying in this way by, by all praying the prayer out loud together. Let's do it together. Jesus, you repeat it. Yep. I invite you into my life. Please forgive my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now. Make me salt and light in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And if you prayed that prayer, woo, we welcome you to the kingdom of God, to the family of God. And if, you, if, it's, if it is a newer thing that you have put your faith in Jesus, would you just text the word restart, re, as in restarting your life, restart to the phone number 97000? And I want to say something. I don't usually say this, but I just feel prompted, so I'm going to say it. If you have put your faith in Jesus sort of recently or you've come back to him sort of recently, you know a lot more people than I do True. who are not yet believers. Mm -hmm. you, are, you are in a unique opportunity and possibility to invite people to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. One way to do that is invite them to a, a worship service, a gathering. That's one way. But uh, how will God spur your creativity to be salt and light in your circle. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's think that way. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we have been challenged and encouraged. We're going to walk it out. Amen. Amen. Well, I have a few things to remind you of today. Uh, again, if you are new with us to text the word GREET to 97000, we try to make it as easy as possible for you. So that's an easy way to do it is just get that phone out. And then uh, next Sunday, reminder, we're back here at 1030. So no more evening service. We're here in the mornings. Yeah, so that's awesome. And those of you joining us online, so our live stream will be at 1030. So remember that. Uh, and then if you are joining us online too, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that just helps more people find us. Um, and then so right now, we're getting ready for our annual business meeting. Those of you who are members, we highly, highly, highly encourage you to stay for that. Um, those of you who are not members, we love to have you be a part also because it's just a great time to hear where God has been uh, taking us in the last year and where we're going. Um, so uh, we have snacks for everybody. We have child care taken care of. Kids will get a snack also. So if you have kids, don't go get them. They'll be fine. Just let them be. We found as parents that it's better to don't go and show your face because then they start freaking out. Um, so those of you who are members, you will want to head out into the lobby and sign in because we do need to have the roster um, signed in uh, for each person that is a member. And then um, as we're heading out, we are going to get salt, right? Okay, so I, are the ushers ready? Ushers are ready. Okay, we'll see you in 15 minutes. We're going to start at 1145 in here for a business meeting or next week if you're not staying. Have a great week. <laughs>